Hello, BAME Farm fans. They are coming in underneath the machine a little bit to get one of the more difficult to reach grease cirques. There is one in here. And it's good not to forget it because it can be very expensive if you do. It just greases the splines on the end of the bubble up auger gearbox shaft. And I try to make sure to get it at least a couple times a season. I don't know if that's often enough, but that's what it gets. A little barrel or something? Or something. I mean, I don't know. It's more about containing... Okay. I don't know, do we want to contain the mess or not? At least we're here in the garden. Yeah. I wasn't overly worried about it. Which we might lose a bushel of beans and dust, or well, maybe less. It sounds like it's slowing down. That's not even a bushel. We'll lose a few handfuls, really big handfuls. Okay, find a nice safe spot for these. Like up here on the axle. Makes a nice table. Okay, one came with us, one stayed there. Don't drop the wrench. And hope that we ended somewhere close to being able to grease this. Anyway, I can see in there better than you guys can. Oh, it's dry, and that's good. Whenever I sit this outside, I make sure to put a bucket on top of this auger to cover it. And the grease cirque is shooting out the side over here. Ah, so I might take our handy dandy pipe wrench and turn this so I can see in there. Yeah, so all this was fairly new, not too long before I got the combine, like within a couple years. Store outside storage makes these become a problem spot because it's pointing straight up and the weather comes straight down and usually nobody takes that cover off. Uh, the bat board on the straw chopper makes a fantastic table. If there's anybody out there in New Holland Combine land who has a spinner instead of a chopper for the back of one of these, I'll trade you if you want. I'll get up here and we'll turn this backwards. Oh, I already checked the oils this morning. I'm gonna go through and do another greasing before we head out. Yeah, this is why this grease zerk in there is normally forgotten about because it's hard to access and I can't see. I'm just hoping we're turning it the correct direction. And we are probably not. It looks like it's farther back. We'll turn the whole machine the opposite direction. I might have been able to do this by hand on the pulley, but it's a little easier to have a leverage point. Okay, we'll guess if that's far enough. Wow. I guess the rotors have to turn a bunch to get that to come around, but we're getting closer. Oh yeah, when it's empty, it's easy to turn the whole machine by hand. It's probably the way it should be. Okay, based on the sound of beans dumping out. Hey, we can get to it. There it is, in the darkness, right there. That one is supremely important. Let's dig more of that out. Okay, grease gun time. Look into the darkness. Come on, is the grease gun out? Now I think we're empty. 
I'm gonna hate myself for that. Oh, time for a new tube. I've refilled this once before on camera on that uh, new gale silage wagon to us. That looks empty. I checked it this morning and there was enough to grease one bearing left in it, but not enough to change it yet. What if we take the 10 because it's got lights? Yeah. Well, I don't know, just saying because yeah. things and stuff. I'm gonna try this again. Let's see, we'll pick another easy to get to on to grease. up. A grease circ up there. There's a bit more of say, that clicking noise. That's when there's a uh, good solid pressure coming through and it's not air. So we'll reach up there again. That sounds better. How much does it need? Eh. I don't know if I'll ever see it. That's probably excessively too much, hopefully. Okay, what else is in here? We got one hiding down low for the main shaft coming through the machine. Hopefully you guys can see back in there. Got that, we got the other one. Oh yeah, we gotta get this one on the gearbox. I don't know, 15 pumps, that'd be enough. Reach in here and get the fan. I think. Yeah, I can see grease moving. And then there's one hiding down here on the lower end of the fan that's really hard to find. But I think we've seen a lot of greasing before. And there's grease cirques all up there for the pivot for the feeder house. I think I found most of the ones back there. And then there's a similar setup on the other side for the threshing clutch. Right. Oh, joyous task of lining this all back up. Okay, it feels like we caught the little slotted hole for the other side. And somehow I thoroughly have this carriage bolt wedged in place, which is fantastic. Uh, it isn't moving. It's a pain when you gotta sit there and try to line two of these up. And now I just gotta find a wrench to tighten these up more than just doing it by hand. Let's see, we also fiddled with adjusting the Separator clutch some. Push that pin in, you can rotate the disc. And we also had to shorten that uh, piece of linkage to get it to over center the lever properly in the cab. We haven't had any troubles with it slipping. And that was our problem. I guess we should have it fully adjusted after we put in the new discs uh, last season.